very briefly, of course, but something about your professional background. Right. I, my, I, the first part of my career was spent on connections between political theory and international relations, and I had a particular interest through the 1990s on critical theory and international relations. I began work on what I call the problem of harm around about 2000, 2002, and I began to look for a sociology of restraints on harm, controls on harm, and in answer to your question about the connection with Eliza's writings, purely by chance, I picked up Jonathan Fletcher's book on violence and civilization, and found in there a quotation from the Germans, in which there's a reference to civilization and harm. I won't go into the details, take too long, but I thought I better check this out. So I checked this out and I was staggered by what I found in the Germans. And then that led me into Eliza's writings uh, in general. And the rest is history, as they say. And that was your first connection with the work of Eliza? It wasn't the first um, connection, but it's a longer story, which is not, not a very interesting story, but um, I, I did r read some parts of the civilizing process in the, 19, in the late 1980s, I think. But I didn't see a connection between Eliza's writings and my own work. It, so I got the point about monopolization of uh, <laughs> violence and taxation, but not much else, to be, uh, to be frank. Uh, and I would like to make a point here, which is Eliza's so hard to get into, it's very difficult to understand um, Elias. One needs, I feel, to see a direct connection between one's own research and something one's, one finds in his writings. I call it the thread, and I'm on pause on that thread, and before you know where you are, you're being drawn into, you, you realize you can't simply pick out one section. You're drawn into the larger work, body of work. So that's, the, that's, that's how I got into Elias from an earlier, uh, from an earlier stage. What triggered your appreciation uh, once you got to know uh, the work? Um, that's a difficult, that's a very difficult question to answer. I was intrigued by the focus on long-term patterns of change. As someone who had been going through Frankfurt School writings, I was especially interested in Habermas's work on the reconstruction of historical materialism. And there was you know, intriguing, really intriguing essays published, I think, in the 1980s on um, moral development as well as development of forces of production. And I was intrigued by the way in which Habermas was trying to reconstruct historical materialism. But nothing seemed to come of that. I think he gave up that project, as far as I can tell, and invested his energies in discourse ethics. So I was looking for something that had a critical theoretical dimension to it and dealt with long-term patterns of change. And I saw in Elias this, this interest in very long-term long patterns of uh, change. And I thought I saw a critical dimension as well. This is, I mean, we have debated this over the last day or, or, or so, but it seemed to me that he was, his writings were not incompatible with the emancipatory spirit of, uh, of the Frankfurt School. I, mean, I think it's more complicated than that. But as a starting point, it seemed to me there were, there were harmonies between process sociology and Frankfurt School critical theory. But what Elias was doing was taking the sociology to a much, much, much higher level. Um, is there, is there uh, one concept of Elias that stands out for you and <coughs> that's for you applicable? And I don't think so. The fact I have to think about it makes me think the answer might be no, it's the, it's the battery of, of concepts. So if you were to have asked me what, what, are, what are the main concepts that occur to you right now as being crucial, patterns of interdependency, long-term patterns of change, established outsider relations, I think I want to add the notion of process reduction. That's a, that's, a, that's, a, 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 that's, a, that's a term I would actually highlight in terms of writing, because when one, when one deals with Elias, it becomes very, very clear that much of the language that many of us 
uh, use is process reducing. It reifies. It abstracts. So there has to be the process of working through Elias is, is, is absolutely fascinating, but very, very demanding. Because A, one has to work out what's this man saying? And then B, if one has made some progress on that front and wishes to organize one's research accordingly, you then have to write differently from the past in a much more processual uh, way. So it's quite a complicated, complicated process or struggle that one has to, <laughs> seems to me, that one has to go through. So, so you came to Elias by accident, so to say? I would call it, yes, yeah. yes, yes, I feel so. But yes. as it appears to me, you would nev never go back. You would never leave this <coughs> perspective. That is correct. Yeah. Yes. That's because once, once one pulls on the thread, one realizes just how complex the analysis is. My introduction to Elias was through the Germans. And then I read the process of civilization. I had no sense back then. I'm going back to 2001, 2002. I had no sense that there, was, there, was, there were works on time, mm -hmm. on symbols, on involvement and detachment. I had no conception of, uh, of that. But it, 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 it be, I began to realize one, one summer, I better go through all the published uh, writings, all of Elias' published writings, to see what else there is of international relations in there. And to my amazement, in, for example, involvement and detachment, there's a whole section, the whole beginning, the whole introductory section is on international relations. And that led me to read more of everything I could find. So whether you pick up the loneliness of the dying <laughs> or sympathy, you will find something on inter international relations, which, of course, was my, you know, this is my discipline. You will find something uh, about international relations. But then it becomes clear through walking through Elias that he has a conception of the international, which very few sociologists have to that level of sophistication. But that is wrapped in up not only with a study of the European past, but the human past. And the, in that whole discussion there are studies of science, involvement and detachment, symbols, time measurement. It's a whole orientation to the world that the one gradually becomes aware of. And it takes, I think it takes several, several years to really appreciate just how complex this form of analysis is and how many layers there are uh, to it. Again, I come back to the fact that Elias is not easy to get access to. He never positions himself in connection with contemporary debates. You can't, you can't locate him easily. You're, you're struggling with him, as it were, on a one-to-one -one, uh, basis. But, but um, I will just say this, it's taking too long to answer this last question, but of course the, 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 the conferences are so crucial if one's relatively new to Elias to come to these co conferences, to hear people talk about the sociology of knowledge and to have it explained uh, clearly um, yeah. to you. Um, a little bit more about this uh, international dimension. I think you, you are one of the very few in the field of international relations who uh, uh, make use of Elias's work. Small number of people, yes. I, yeah. I suppose there might be four or five of us. Yeah. Yes. But you're one of the more explicit uh, advocates of Maybe, the possibly. figurational yes, uh, approach. Yes, possibly. Yes. But what, what is what is the, the what is the meaning of Elias's work in this more international perspective? I I'm I'm intrigued by the analysis of civilized self-images. And I have a book I'm just finishing, which is called The Idea of Civilization in World Politics, States, Empires, and International Society. One could write a book on the idea of civilization without paying any attention to Elias at all. There's a great mass of stuff out there on, on civilizations and conflicts between civilizations. And there are no references to Elias. So in principle, it is possible. But I think unwise. 
I think one needs to know where did this idea of civilization come from? Um, and we have in the very first sections of the civilizing process a narrative about how conceptions of civility give way to notions of civilization in the French court. There's an immediate reference to state formation, state building, the centralization of power, the, the controls over faults, but also over modes of orientation. There's a focus on the international immediately, in that Paris, the Versailles, Versailles rather, I should say, rather than Paris, Versailles becomes the standard setting um, court. It may be a bit more complicated than, than this, but in terms of reading lies, this is what one comes away with. So one's got an international dimension built into this. There's a notion of civilization that's percolating from, from elite to elite, and then of course in time down from elite to lower social um, strata. All this is explained in, uh, in Elias's writings. Now, if one wants to understand something like the use of the idea of civilization as part of the discourse of the war on terror, it helps to know all this, it seems to me, to, to, to have at one's fingertips this resource which explains how this idea of civilization developed in the first place, how it was tied up with particular um, concerns about violence and controls on violence. And you know the examples in the civilizing process, you know, car burning and, uh, and so forth, you know, certain, certain practices are acceptable once and then they become repulsive. Well, if you think about torture, torture mm -hmm. once was not regarded as being particularly repulsive, at least by elites, maybe the people who were the victims had a different mm -hmm. view, but um, there was a high level of tolerance of, um, of judicial torture. And we see changes in orientation towards the use of force. And Elias, on the process of civilization, I think gives one access to understanding that. Mm. Um, how did uh, Elias's work uh, influence you as, as a scientist, as a thinker? Well, I think it's partly the, 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 use of the, the, the way one writes and the way one thinks. So the, I go back to the point earlier about process reduction, being very careful yeah. with the language one uses is not process reducing, and that's really quite diff it's quite difficult to avoid process mm -hmm. reduction. It's the it's the default position to to, <laughs> to yeah. reify and, and abstract. So we've got to try and find a way out of that. So there's a everyday influence. I'm always thinking about Elias if I'm writing. I'm mm -hmm. thinking about what to try and correct, in by way of certain uh, almost natural inclinations. Mm -hmm. They're not natural, but you know what I'm what I'm what I'm getting at. Um, so that, but, but, uh, but I would also say just the sheer ingenuity, uh, sheer imagination, I, I think I might want to use the word genius, of the mind and the scale, the comprehensiveness of the analysis. I mean, it's unbelievably wide-ranging. I mean, you can read an essay on uh, how people respond to your untied shoelaces. You could read something which is micro and then you can read something which, on the symbol, th symbol theory, for example, which is about the entire history of the human species, yeah. and indeed takes us back to you know proto proto humans, and so forth. I mean, they're just incredible, incredibly comprehensive. I don't see anything else like this in the social sciences. And then the depth, the incredible depth and the, and the rigor of the um, analysis. So. The influences are, are, are there. 